let us now look at how static and stagnation pressure measurements can be combined into one nifty device and that particular device is called as a pitostatic tube and uh, this kind of pitostatic tube can be found in aircrafts it can be found in uh, you know military aircrafts as well civilian aircrafts as well uh, it can be also found on formula 1 cars uh, if you look carefully on the nose there will be a small probe like this sticking out and they are responsible for the measurement of air speed velocity and it's quite accurate and given a good calibration it's really quite accurate and that is why it's still prevalent of course it's not entirely measured by manometry nowadays it's all pressure transducers but regardless it's a very useful thing to know how pitostatic tubes look like so a pitostatic tube consists of one central bore so this is so suppose this is the first bore so this is the solid part and this is the bore and there is a small taper like this okay so after this on the surface of this apparatus there is another bore so there is another bore like this and it's connected with well, i've drawn it too small let me redraw it so let me just draw one bore like this and another bore like this and just for good measure i can have two static bores and it will be clear what the design is in a moment in fact let me color the static bores like this yeah. so now this entire thing is solid so this central bore is measuring the static pressure uh, the other stagnation pressure while these taps on the tube itself they are measuring the static pressure so these are the static tap and this is for the stagnation pressure and now you can imagine that these can be con connected so imagine that this tap is not there is just one static this in case you are confused this entire thing is solid i am showing the cross section of it so i am hatching the solid part so it's basically tube in tube so one central tube stagnation pressure and two static taps i mean there can be four it's very much like having multiple taps to find out the static pressure is just to reduce the error now you can imagine that this central part can be connected to one limb of a manometer and this can be connected to the other limb of the manometer so the manometric fluid because this pressure is going to be high this manometric fluid will be lesser over here and higher over here. so based on this delta h you can directly find out the air speed and the air speed like all the other calculations it's very easy to find if this is the velocity v the velocity over here is also going to be v but the velocity over here is going to be zero so whatever the static pressure will be at this cross section will be the same static pressure at this cross section as well right 
and in fact uh, you can imagine a streamline going from the stagnation point to this point as well so between those two points p not plus rather not plus p not is a stagnation pressure p not is equal to p plus half rho v square if the tube is quite small the change in elevation is going to be quite small right so p not minus p which is delta p is going to be half rho v square and so the v is going to be 2 delta p upon rho and the square root of that and by now you can easily apply the ideas of hydrostatics to find out an expression for delta p in terms of this delta h in terms of rho manometer remember that these uh, pitostatic tubes are usually used in places where you are more concerned about measuring air speed velocity or the air velocity air speed okay so with the help of this measurement and if, and nowadays like i've mentioned again this is done using a using a differential pressure transmitter so you can have a single pressure transmitter a transducer or you can also have a differential pressure transducer so if you use a differential pressure transducer you can connect so a differential pressure transducer looks like a box with two openings one of this tubes goes over here the other tube goes over here and with the help of electronics springs and diaphragms it is able to give an output a voltage output or a current output of the difference in pressures typically such kinds of uh, differential pressure transducers give an output of 4 milliamperes to 20 milliamperes you can then use analog electronics to convert uh, to record this reading or to convert it into voltage you can do whatever you want with that essentially you can also control valves so if you hook it up with a microcontroller you can put a microcontroller logic so if you say that if this pressure is corresponding to 1 kilopascal and this pressure is corresponding to 20 kilopascal and if you want to shut off a certain valve at 10 kilopascal so say 10 kilopascal corresponds to a current of 10 milliampere then you can have a logic in your microcontroller that once the current exceeds 10 milliamperes you set off a relay which can close a particular valve so you can actuate a relay so such kinds of uh, digital transducers are quite useful in industrial automation where you want to have a tight control over the entire process so with the help of this you can find out the velocity but look this velocity is the theoretical velocity and it is the velocity under the assumption that the velocity goes to zero at the stagnation point in a reversible and adiabatic manner however there will be losses there will be cases where there is a certain heat generation and bernoulli equation does not account for heat transfers it is just a conservation of mechanical energy so in case there is the process is not adiabatic the velocity that you will actually measure will be lower than the theoretical velocity so in in order to account, account for that you can put in an empirical factor so the v actual will be some constant times 2 delta p upon rho so this particular constant has to be found out through calibration so this is what this is how you can use a pitostatic tube to measure air speed it's quite simple it's quite robust